I'd like to thank all of you for being here and welcome you to the 2018 Village of the State Address. Uh, if we could start by uh, standing for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just a, uh, a few thank yous I'd like to uh, start with. Uh, obviously, Silver Cross Hospital, uh, Ruth Colby, thank you very much uh, to you and your staff. Uh, in particular, we've been working with uh, Leslie Newbon, who uh, does such a wonderful job for us. I don't know where Leslie's at, but uh, she was helping out uh, all the way up until just two minutes ago. So uh, just a, uh, a wonderful uh, place here at Silver Cross and is such a great partner in our community. So thank you for opening up the uh, room to us. And uh, for I'm sure you all know, but uh, Ruth is the uh, new CEO here at Silver Cross. She has been a, uh, an outstanding member of the team. Uh, for so long and now leads to team and we're excited to work with her. So congratulations Ruth and thank you. I also have to say thank you to Emily Johnson and the Chamber. The Chamber of Commerce does so much for our community. Uh, we're all, we have so many ribbon cuttings. We're so excited to be there. They support small local business. Uh, they work well with the village, so Emily, thank you for your role in putting this on and for all you do for the chamber. We greatly appreciate it. And to our village staff, uh, who does so much, and uh, really uh, today is about, uh, from our staff, Nancy Dye up front, who uh, leads our economic development but does so much more than that. Uh, she has a, a wealth of information and talent. Uh, having served this community as a school board member, as a village trustee, and now as an extremely capable uh, member of our staff. She works hard on this, and Nancy, thank you for this and all that you do. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I know not everybody uh, here lives in New Lenox, but uh, we're here to brag about New Lenox today and talk about all the good things that are happening. Uh, New Lenox is recognized in many ways. Uh, 30th best place to raise a family in Illinois in 2018, 100th safest community in the United States in 2017, and the 18th best Chicago suburb for families in 2017. I don't know where those other 17 are, but they can't be anywhere around here because we, in my heart, we're number one. Uh, we are recognized with our partners, and I want to talk about them today. Um, you see the list of, of all of them here. Uh, our New Lenox Fire Protection District. Uh, we appreciate all that they do. Uh, being a first responder uh, is extremely difficult. Uh, you see conditions like this. There have been some structure fires. There are always people in need, accidents. Uh, our Fire Protection District does a great job. Uh, they are currently uh, running a referendum and uh, nobody likes to see referendums, nobody likes to talk about tax increases, but I think we have a responsibility and an obligation uh, to be informed and to know why are they seeking that, where are they at, what are they doing. I can tell you <coughs> that our fire protection district and the foundation that they partner with uh, do tremendous, tremendous work in our community and uh, they do it with one of the lowest tax rates around. So please get educated on that, and uh, we're very grateful for all that they do. Uh, certainly very supportive of our fire department and their efforts. Uh, we have representatives from our park district here, from our library, from uh, ShareFest, a great, great organization that started here in New Lenox and has branched out through Will County and we're excited to see that happen. We also have our representatives from uh, the other governmental agencies. Uh, from the county, we have uh, Larry Walsh, the Will County Executive is here, as well as our county representatives, Ray Tuminello and Tom Weigel. We have um, a representative from PACE, Rick Kwasnowski is here, so Rick, thank you for being here. Um, we have representatives from our state, uh, Margot McDermott 
Anthony DeLuca, Michael Hastings, we're very grateful for all that they do, and from our federal government as well, from our congressman's office, from Congressman Rush, as well as Congressman Foster. So uh, we welcome all of them and uh, their partnerships that they have. Um, you know, it's a, it's a unique time. It's not, it's not a good time uh, in politics, and I'll take a moment to step out and talk about that. Uh, we live in a uh, very divided country. There are those who profit from that division. Uh, they like to fan the flames of division. And so for, uh, actually I was criticized uh, by somebody because I said at one of the State of the Village addresses that it doesn't matter to me as a mayor if you are a Republican or a Democrat, what matters to me is that you're providing good public service. And I was quoted that way and I was criticized for it and it was criticism that I loved. I wish they would continue to run that criticism because I stand by that statement again today. And although we don't see or read or hear about political parties coming together to work, I can tell you that in this community it happens. We are nonpartisan at the village level. We don't belong to a particular party when it comes to running for office. We have our own individual beliefs, but we are nonpartisan. We are represented at partisan levels by Republicans and Democrats. And I can tell you to a member, anytime I pick up that telephone and make a phone call, I get the same good service by both sides. And that's what matters to me as the mayor of New Lenox is that we've got friends that are willing to put people before party, people before politics, and serve their constituents. And uh, I can say that about every member that I listed here today, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. So uh, thank you to all of them. I do think that uh, politicians don't often deserve a round of applause, but our partners here do. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. And they're, doing, and they're doing great work as well that, that impacts our community. The county, uh, Ray Tumanello is the chair of, of uh, land use and capital projects, and uh, uh, there are a number of great capital projects that are taking place. Uh, we appreciate his efforts and the county board's efforts. Um, I uh, work very closely with County Executive Walsh uh, in putting together the new consolidated 911 center that you see at Laraway and uh, Cherry Hill Road. Uh, which brought 31 different agencies together in the interest of good government and good public safety. And uh, we appreciate County Executive. Thank you for all your leadership and support on that. It's something that's good for the entire community. So uh, we're very, very grateful uh, for the good work uh, that's being done here. We are recognized, of course, for our schools. And it's something we talk about all the time and something we will continue to talk about. We are a great community with great schools. Uh, you look at the list of schools there, uh, both public and private, that represent uh, New Lenox and, and beyond, and they do an outstanding job of educating our children. Uh, of course, we always hear about the great athletic accomplishments, but the truth is uh, not only do we have uh, great sports teams, uh, great academics, but they are helping families raise fine young men and women. And so from the boards to the CEOs of these schools, thank you for all you do in an incredibly difficult time. And I'm gonna talk about this a little later on. Uh, public education, of course, everybody knows about. Um, public funding of education uh, is down. It's, uh, it's a very sad state of affairs in the state of Illinois. Our schools have to continually do more with less. They're not just charged with educating students. Teachers and administrators now have to be social workers. They have to do so much more than just teach reading and writing and arithmetic. They really have a tremendous burden. And in this community, despite adversity, Despite the difficult financial times, they do an outstanding job of that. And so we're extremely grateful because, as you'll see in these slides, New Lenox is growing. And it continues to be the primary reason that we grow is the education that our families can get for their children. So thank you to all of those that are providing that education here. 
We are recognized for premium and uh, premier health care. I talk about it every year when we're here, how years ago the vision was that this was going to be 2 million square feet of retail, and uh, I, for one, am grateful that it's not. Um, as nice as it is to have that sales tax base, I would much, much rather have quality health care. When you look at the list of partners up here, of course we're here at Silver Cross, but this is not just a replacement hospital. Look at the partnerships that Silver Cross has. Rehabilitation Institute, uh, uh, Lurie Children's Hospital, the new behavioral health hospital that's going to be opening in 2019, the surgery center across the street that will be opening soon, uh, Chicago uh, Oncology, University of Chicago Oncology. People no longer have to travel downtown for serious health needs. They've got the quality health care right here, right here in our community, and I'm so very grateful and proud of that. Presence uh, has their Women's uh, Healing Arts Pavilion, a wonderful facility that people should take advantage of. So we appreciate that quality health care, and uh, again, I'll take, it, I'll take it over a mall any day of the week. It continues to grow. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, that in just a few minutes, too, about the west side of the campus and the good things that are going to be happening there. We get together as a board, as every board does, whether they're a uh, municipal board or a school board or a park board, and you hold strategic plan sessions and you talk about goals. We want to be fiscally stable. And despite the tough economic times of the past 10 years, we have always had a balanced budget. Always had a balanced budget. It is the goal, typically, of municipalities to have 25% reserves, uh, depending on what happens, just for that rainy day. Uh, we have 30% in reserves. Uh, Kim Oxtetter is here, our finance director, with her staff. Um, I always joke Kim about it, but it's true. Uh, she looks at me with a frown every time we talk about doing something. She's truly supportive, but she watches that bottom line. She watches to make sure that we keep that money in reserves, that we always have a balanced budget, uh, something that we're proud of being very fiscally conservative. And Kim, thank you to you and your staff and all that you do, and we will continue to do that. That is one of our goals. Property tax rebates we like to talk about. With the mailing going out in March, we will have returned over the past eight years $7.2 million to our residents. $7.2 million that could have stayed in the village coffers. People say, why do you have a property tax rebate? Why don't you just lower your water bill? Well, I will explain it again. The property tax rebate goes 100% to the residents of our community. If you lower water rates, for example, that means that everybody, commercial, industrial, everybody shares in that, which means that the savings to the residents is going to be very, very small. Very small. It's 100% to our residents in a property tax rebate, and that's why we do it. Now, we do other things for businesses. We're going to talk about our partnerships with them. Sometimes you'll hear about uh, tax abatements or you'll hear about how we partner financially with, with businesses, and that's good. That's good for the growth of the community. So it's not like they don't get their share. But the residents get 100% of this. And we hear constantly about property taxes and high property taxes. The village gets a very small portion of the property tax. On average, we might get $400 from a home and we're giving $300 back. So we get very little. So who do you want to blame for your high property taxes? The schools? That's where the bulk of your money goes. The truth is that in the state of Illinois, schools are supposed to be funded at at least 50.1%. They are not. Here in New Lenox, state funding is somewhere between 8 and 12 percent. So I think the school districts would probably tell you that they would be happy 
to have a property tax freeze if they got 50% of funding for public education like they're supposed to, but they don't. So the burden falls back on the property tax owner constantly. And so it's our small way of doing what we can to give something directly back to you. And that's why we do a property tax rebate. We made a promise years ago that we would keep up on our infrastructure from a mile and a half of local roads being repaired to seven miles of roads being repaired. We do that, which essentially means when you've got 42 or 43 square miles ultimately that we can be built out to, you'll get a new road every 20 years, a local road every 20 years, which is about the lifespan of a local road. Everybody thinks their road is in the worst shape, but our engineers are out there looking at them and determining which ones need to be fixed first. I've got full confidence that they're doing that right. Uh, no, it's not my subdivision or where I live, uh, I can assure you, uh, but um, they do a great job of that and staying on top of that. That's a promise that we made and a promise that we kept. Our comprehensive plan, what our community will look like as it grows, you need to constantly look at that because it changes. But our comp plan, uh, we've had several meetings. A tentative completion for that is the end of this year. The next public meeting will be held this spring. We have encouraged people to come out and participate and give their input. And we would encourage you to do that in the spring when we have our next meeting. Why are we so successful here? Well, one of the reasons is uh, we market our community. We market through a number of events, through a number of different ways. Everything from the simple things like movie nights. Uh, Wednesdays in the summer, families can come out and enjoy the free movies on the commons. We have our Fridays after five, something that was extremely successful this year, um, where we had nearly 2,000 people attend. It was free, free, mu uh, free music. You just come out, enjoy yourself, get something to eat. Live on the lawn, more concert events. Our 4th of July celebration, uh, which will continue, is one of the best around. An incredible fireworks display uh, with music. We get eight to 10,000 people come out to view the fireworks. Uh, bands and brews, a great tradition that's, that goes on. Our ladies' night out, a night out for the ladies to come out uh, where we uh, cater to them because they're catering to us men 364 days a year. So the one day we could do is give you a ladies' night out. I tried crashing it one year, I was thrown out. And uh, our Oktoberfest, uh, new this year, we're gonna expand, we're gonna have, you know, Oktoberfest. It was a little short because of the weather, but um, oh, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, something else, so we're gonna constantly try and expand on those great events for people, to bring people together in our commons area, to the center of our community. Bring us together, because no matter how large we grow, geographically or by population, we want to continue to have that small community feel. Our uh, Triple Play Concert Series, we, this will be the 10th year for our Triple Play Concert Series. And it's, I always enjoy hearing from people that say they've been at, at every single one. Uh, we have one act lined up already this year. No, I won't tell you who it is or when it is, uh, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's nice to see people come together and also help market our community. We sell those tickets to New Lenox residents, but we know that they buy for friends uh, and, and family that live outside the community. And so people get to come out and they have a great time. They really enjoy it. Christmas in the Commons, wonderful event. Yes, Santa Claus was expensive. Well worth it. Absolutely, people love the lights, they love the display. I can't tell you how many Christmas cards, I don't even know how many Christmas cards had families in the big ornament or by Santa, but what I can tell you is this year in the mailbox for letters to Santa, there were letters from over 61 different communities. Over 2,500 children received letters from Santa. Now, not everyone that came out there dropped a letter in the mailbox, but that means that people traveling from 61 different communities at a minimum came to our town, shopped, ate. I know, Nikki, maybe they didn't buy gas, but we still, we're still fighting the good fight. 
but they're spending money in our town. And that's how we market our community. It, it gets uh, Chicago TV coverage. People know about it. And I'll tell you how we know we know about it. Because this year, the, the survey came out that New Lenox was the number one Googled community from people in Cook County. Number one. People wanting to flee Cook County. Gee, I can't imagine why. Where are they looking to go? Right here in New Lenox. And that's because we are marketing our community. We have so much to offer. It's all the things that we're talking about here today. So we're awfully excited about the events that we put on and the hard work that goes on. We are trying to, and we are successfully, uh, marketing our community nationally. Now let me say it again and again and again. New Lenox has been and will always be, as long as I'm mayor, the home of proud Americans. That is how we feel, that is who we are, that is what we respect. But when you are marketing to people in California, in New Jersey, and across the United States, that doesn't necessarily ring true with them. That's our thing. We are the home of proud Americans and we're proud of that. But we have a marketing campaign that talks about just how extraordinary we are. And it's not just us as an institution, it's us as a people. We are extraordinary people in this community to pull together to do good things. That's why we're successful. Housing starts. Uh, Joliet. Great community. Uh, it is in Will County and Kendall County. Uh, these are the housing permits. New Lenox is number one of any community that's solely in Will County. The 195 housing permits issued through uh, 1231 of 17. Uh, you look at our uh, other neighbors there, they're doing well, bouncing back from the recession, but we continue to lead the charge on building new houses here in town. And we're very, very proud of that. And one of the things we talked about when we became home rule as it, as it applies to housing and, and real estate is we said we'd never put a real estate transfer tax on, and we haven't. We don't believe in that. That we would not exceed the tax cap, even though as a home rule community we could, and we never have, and we won't. So uh, despite those things, keeping those promises, we are number one. Five-year residential permits issued, you can see they've been strong. 2013, 175, then 164, 162, 177, and last year, 195. So residential growth is up. When the recession hit, of course, coincidentally, that I like to complain about, the year that I was elected mayor the first time, <coughs> we were down to, I think, 24 or 25 housing permits. What, Robin, what one? 23, thank you, I stand corrected, 23. 23, now at 195. Look around the room, you're the reason that we're at 195. The value of those permits, construction permits, you can see uh, the multifamily was Alden, which is going up uh, off Cedar Road there with 53 units. Total uh, new investments, $47 million in new construction. But it's not just new construction, there are remodel permits, people reinvesting in their homes, reinvesting in their businesses. That was another $6.75 million worth of reinvestment. We like to see that, people who want to stay. People who want to keep their business here or keep their home here and they add on to that. We love to see that. 23 new businesses were added here in New Lenox in 2017. Take a moment, please, to uh, look at the list. Some more. These new businesses, most of whom are small local businesses. These are men and women who take their life savings, their heart and soul, and pour it into their community. 
This isn't just a hobby for them. This is how they pay their mortgage, how they feed their families, how they give something back to their community by taking the risk and opening up a business. And as great as it is, and we're going to look at some of these, to have some of these nice big businesses come, and they are important, we truly need to support the small local business owner. These are our neighbors. These are our friends. So please, think about that. When you're going to get something to eat, yeah, we all have our favorite chain restaurant to go to. Try the new place. When you're going to get your, your lawn taken care of or your snow shovel or you're going to go get your new floor or carpet put in, when you're going to, please try and look. The Chamber website is a wealth of information on people that uh, provide these services for you right here at home. So we would encourage you to do that, to look at that and give them that first option. Businesses are staying and reinvesting. Many small business owners here, we just talked about that are staying here, moving to a no, new location, expanding their location. Just last week, we found out that Ranch Frosties, a new Lenox institution that has been here for decades, was gonna go out of business. Okay, it's a small hot dog and ice cream place. It's much more than that. It's New Lenox. It's quintessential New Lenox. And the great thing is that it has been purchased by a couple of people that have lived in this community their whole life. They want to run it like it's been run for decades. Now how great is that? So they deserve our support. We should be out there. Uh, I have no doubt they're going to get it, but all of these business owners, please, please pay them back by going there. We are excited to have new big business. Uh, we get a lot of requests from people for certain businesses. Uh, Cooper's Hawk is, is a restaurant that uh, uh, people have asked for uh, for many years. Uh, Pete's Fresh Market is a different type of grocery that people have asked for. Um, we're excited to see them coming uh, right across the street from the Portillo's there on Route 30. We are, with this development and the next development I'm going to talk about, we are partners in this. And sometimes people question that, which is okay. Why would the village partner with business? Well, there's a couple routes that we could go. We could wait for development to happen on its own. And in this day and age, you know how difficult it is to be able to spend the millions of dollars to bring some of these big businesses in. So if you wait, it won't happen. If you sit on your hands, it won't happen. We could have a TIF district. We could have a TIF district which takes sorely needed dollars away from the other taxing bodies in town who are, are already in a funding crisis because as we stated either they're not getting the money from the state or uh, for example with the parks where the grants are not there that used to be there our fire protection district that's trying to keep their head above water to provide a great public safety. So I'm not a fan of just saying let's have a TIF district because as the mayor of New Lenox I have an obligation to look out for all of the taxing bodies because we're not successful if they're not successful. So therefore we don't want to go that route. So we make a business decision. We sit as a board, and uh, it's a, a, a good opportunity for me to say thank you uh, to our board members, uh, some of whom are here, some who could not be here, our village trustees uh, who do an outstanding job. But we sit together as a board staff and we make a business decision. We look at it and say, okay, if we invest X amount of dollars, what's the risk, what's the reward, what's the benefit? Well, the benefit is bringing in new amenities. The benefit is bringing in new tax dollars. The benefit is creating new jobs, both temporary through construction and permanent uh, beyond that. 
And is it a safe bet? Is it something that we're confident will end up benefiting our community in the long run? And when we feel it is, we get involved in it. And we're excited to see this particular development taking place, as well as the development that's been taking forever at Route 30 in Cedar, but I'm gonna talk about that. The last piece of the puzzle closes February 15th, next week, so the shovel's in the ground this spring. The CVS, the Durbins, the Darlis Cafe, the Fleckenstein's Bakery, why did, it, why did we get involved, number one? Well, there were four parcels up there, one that had been abandoned for years. One that was an underperforming gas station with bad access. One that was the pit stop. I'll just leave it at that. And then a dry cleaner. And um, what was happening was there was a possibility that somebody could have bought one of those parcels which would have made it nearly impossible to redevelop that area. Private development tried to get it done. They couldn't get it done, it wasn't feasible. We were able to get it done for a million dollars less. And yes, it has taken a long time because we had to deal with the Army Corps of Engineers, we had to deal with Metra, we had to deal with the EPA, we had to deal with IDOT. Government agencies don't always move the quickest. And trying to put all of that together is what took as long as it took. But the final piece closes next week, shovels in the ground, and we're hoping that uh, by fall, those businesses are open. So that's exciting to see that, that going. That also leads to our train station. Again, you have to respond to the requests when you can from your residents. People who take the train, and we have quite a few people that take the train in New Lenox, people that come from other communities as well to take our train, have said for years, we have the worst train station on the line. It is in the worst shape, the worst condition, and it's far away from parking. It's far away from parking. And so we will build an efficient, not over the top, but an efficient train station closer to the parking that makes more sense. So we're excited to see that happen. Again, thriving healthcare we talked about. This is a little, a little look. That's the groundbreaking for the behavioral hospital, something sorely needed in this area, sorely needed throughout the entire United States. Uh, so we're excited to see that coming, and we know there's going to continue to be growth on the west side of the campus there. Let's take just one moment to talk about that behavioral health center, because that's important. In my humble opinion, it may be the biggest issue as a country that we are dealing with. Our inability to deal with people that have mental health issues. You can bury your head in the sand and say, oh no, I don't, I don't wanna talk about it, I don't wanna deal with it. But the reality is that you cannot incarcerate successfully people that have mental health issues, nor should you. You can't wish it away. And so, whereas there might have been a time or there may still be areas where people would say, eh, no thank you, put that somewhere else. Not us. We're proud, proud to have that facility coming here to New Lenox. Proud to be able to offer those resources and that support to the people who need it. Because if they don't get the help where will they be? Where will they be? They're not going away. They're going to be in our communities. These are, this affects every walk of life. Doesn't matter what color you are, what religion you are, how much money you have. You may suffer from these mental health issues. You may have these addictions. You may have these problems that need to be addressed. And so we're extremely proud to be working with Silver Cross uh, to see this mental health facility come. Extremely proud, excited to get it open. Investing in infrastructure. Never pretty, never glamorous, but people want to drink water and they want to go to the bathroom. So we have an obligation to address it. 
It's expensive. Those of you who live and work in this community know that we have had a number, I know District 122 knows, of water main breaks on Cedar Road, on Route 30, closing down businesses, affecting travel. It's old infrastructure. The board and staff are moving forward with a plan starting this spring to replace the Cedar Road water main north and south on Cedar. That will be completed this year. The following year, the Route 30 water main. Those are expensive projects. And again, they're not very glamorous, but they need to be taken care of. We're addressing them. Lake Michigan water came to this area just a little less than 20 years ago. There is a redundant water line that has to be built throughout all of those communities. Our end of that water line, 13 communities are participating, our end of that water line is about 21, 22 million dollars. We have to have it. Have to have it. Wastewater treatment plants. Hot topic these days. Actually has been for quite some time. The plant on Route 30 was built in the 60s. The plant in Jackson Branch was built in the 70s. We are at capacity. And the Illinois EPA correctly says, you need to do something about it. Now we could spend tens of millions of dollars trying to expand those existing plants, trying to retrofit those existing plants, or we can build a new regional plant, which makes sense in the long run, and not only makes sense for today, but makes sense for several years in the future. That's a $60 million plant. Because it's gonna have the, the latest technology, you've gotta run pipes to it. It will allow us to reduce the Route 30 plant and the Jackson Branch plant to pumping stations, we'll take, which will take care of the odor problems and everything else that we've been dealing with. Now, so we're talking about $85 million worth of infrastructure. How do you pay for that? Pay for it by taxes. You pay for it by an increased sewer bill or water bill. When we make those decisions to increase those bills, we don't like it. We pay it. I can assure you I don't get free water. And my kids take just as long a shower as your kids. So, but it's the responsible thing to do. Now we try to stretch that out so as growth happens they can help pay for it. And also that is paid for by not only residential but commercial and industrial. They help pay for those costs as well. But it's an expensive proposition. It'd be really easy as an elected official to say, you know what, I'm not gonna deal with that. I don't wanna increase those rates. Let somebody else do it. Let the next man or woman do that. Well, have a look at your roads and bridges. That's what's happened at the state and federal level for years. They've been allowed to crumble. We won't let that happen. And yes, on more than one occasion, I get a text message or an email or a phone call telling me what a horrible person I am and that they're not gonna vote for me next time because their water bill went up $15. Well, I'm sorry I lost your vote, but at least you're gonna have clean water and you're gonna have a new facility. Now this treatment facility, we have looked at several different sites. We have one under contract right now, we're going through our due diligence, but we continue to look at a few other sites. We wanna make it as least objectionable as possible. We will do that through buffering, we will do that through new technology. It won't be the issue that some people think it will be, but we will do everything we can to minimize impact for people. But it's something that has to be done, and we're gonna do it. We're gonna continue to do the right thing, regardless of whether it's popular or not, 
regardless of whether I lose your vote or not, we're going to do the right thing. And that's it. There are several opportunities to invest here. Look at these areas. 355 and Route 6 where we're at. 114,000 population within a five mile radius. Only almost 5,000 average daily estimated visitors to the Silver Cross campus. Route 30 has a population near 90,000 within a five mile radius and, and Laraway Road a population of 68,000 within a five mile radius. There are a number of opportunities for investment. We're gonna see it happen. People always say, when are we gonna get something at Route 6? When are we gonna have a place to eat or a place for people to stay? Well, it's gonna take a little longer, but that's because we're gonna do it right. We could have thrown three strip malls up here and been done with it. And you could have had a hot dog place to eat at. Not gonna happen. This community will be around a lot longer than me, and we must hold out and do the right thing for long-term health of New Lenox. Now, I'm gonna say this. It is difficult to be uh, a leader nowadays. And I, you don't have to be an elected official to be a leader. That's not what makes somebody a leader. You're a leader, you should be a leader if you are an elected official in good government service. You are a leader if you are the superintendent of your schools or you run your park district. You are a leader if you own a small business and you invest in your community. And it's extremely difficult these days to be a leader for a number of reasons. Number one, there is no profit in peace and harmony. The people that control the media, the people that control uh, political parties profit from division and divisiveness. And we the people fall into that trap and we do their bidding. And especially nowadays with social media, it's extremely difficult. Not only as an elected official, I mean, it's one thing for someone to go on and disagree with what you're doing. It's another to be referred to as Hitler, which is disturbing in its own right, um, but I own that distinct honor. It is, uh, you know, but forget the elected officials. Talk about the people that are educating our children or that are trying to provide park district programs or trying to provide public safety that take these attacks on social media. Take the people who invest every penny they have to open a small business and somebody didn't get an extra egg roll so they slam them on social media. The impact that can have on somebody's livelihood. It is an extremely difficult, negative time. And so what I would say as mayor, that I tell myself I have to remind myself, and I would say to all of you, elected officials, CEOs, small business owners, keep your head up. Because the majority of the people that you are serving appreciate you. Forget the negativity, and I will leave you with this quote that every leader has heard, but I want to read it because I think it's important. And it's more appropriate today than it was when it was said over a hundred years ago. So bear with me if you know it, by President Theodore Roosevelt. It's not the critic who counts, not the person who points out how the strong one stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. Credit belongs to those who are actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and no effort without shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions, who's, who knows at best, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who knows at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. It's easy to be a keyboard warrior in your basement at seven o'clock at night. 
to take down a, an elected official, to take down a small business owner. There's no courage in that. Expressing your opinion, expressing your concerns, expressing your approval or disapproval, that's important. That's an important part of the process. But the negativity, the divisiveness, the threats are difficult for all leaders to deal with. Please, you're doing the great work. You are the reason that New Lenox is such a great community. And I implore you as the mayor, keep your head up, push forward. Thank you for your partnerships. We truly, truly appreciate all that you do. Now, uh, in the interest of time, we've got bad road travel, although not New Lenox. Our street department did a great job of keeping our, <laughs> our streets plowed. But for the rest of you that have to leave, yeah, let's hear it for our, our street department. <laughs> Staff and I are going to stay here uh, after this presentation to answer any questions that you may have. But please be safe, and thank you very much for coming out today. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>